Up next, from the age of two, she wanted to be a he. I had a little Superman outfit and there's a little dress. And I took the dress part off because I was not super yeah. the girl, I was Superman. From intolerance and self-abuse... My family didn't understand it, so I just turned towards body hate and obsession. ...to finding his true identity. I finally felt like I was in my own skin. Ryan's story is next. Men who were born female. Today on Trisha. I want to move on to Ryan, who's sitting in the middle. Um, Ryan, uh, in your memoir, you've got a memoir out, Second Son. Now, you talk about the emotional ups and downs of ending up as, as Ryan. How difficult was it for you? Did, you? did you go through feeling first, as Rocco did, that you were a lesbian and then moving on from there? No, uh, you know, trans people, we have different stories. Yeah. And for me, it was difficult because I was born in Nebraska. And I still live in Nebraska, actually, which is still difficult. Uh, and I had no idea what anything was, be it gay, lesbian, transgender. I had a sense of my identity being different, or my gender being different, around age two and a half. Really? Yeah, they say you have a sense of your gender identity, which is uh, what's between your ears, your brain. Your yeah, psychological yeah, sense yeah. of being man or woman. Uh, around 18 months, as early as 18 months. And then you start verbalizing it around age three or four. And how did you verbalize that? Uh, well, I didn't verbalize it that time. What I did was we lived in the country and we had a pool in our backyard. And I saw my family with swimming trunks and I saw my family in a one-piece bathing suit. And I had on a little two-piece. And with my little pudgy stomach, I looked down. I was like, meh. So I took the top off to be like swimming trunks. Yeah. Uh, and then I had a little Superman outfit and there's a little dress. And I took the dress part off because I was not super yeah. girl, I was Superman. And so it was little behaviors like that that I started with. And so I was very frustrated with that. Yeah. I remember staying in the bathroom around age seven and just sitting there and thinking, I got dealt a bad deck of cards. Yeah. And I have to live with this the rest of my life. And this really sucks. And puberty must have been hell. Well, I don't think puberty is fun for anybody, but <laughs> it's, yeah, it's but pretty horrific. Before people would look at me and they'd always confuse me for a little boy, which a part of me really liked, but a part of me still felt frustrated by that because, yeah. you know, I knew I was a girl. You yeah. Know, I didn't want to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then with puberty, you start seeing breast development, hip development, the menstrual cycle. All these things are just uh, horrific. How, uh, did, how did you deal with that? Did, well, when I was little, I had this awareness of wanting to be a boy, and I'd go out in the stars and wish to become one. Oh. Um, and then when puberty hit, yeah. I knew that wasn't possible. I had to let go of that. So I just turned towards body hate and obsession. And I saw some female bodybuilders on TV, and I was super impressed that they really didn't have any breasts because their pectoral muscles were so big. Ah. They didn't really have any body fat, and they were just, you know, really beefy. So did you diet? I was doing, yeah, lots of different behaviors and exercise, weightlifting. Uh, anything that I could do. <laughs> way living, way. Yeah. So, and uh, did you, you developed an eating disorder? I did. When I was in college, I became severely ill with anorexia and I almost died from it. And this was what? About keeping your body, trying to keep your body androgynous, having some control over the uncontrollable? Well, I didn't know. I didn't know what it was about. I just knew I felt very awkward. Yeah. And when I was in college, it, it became even more awkward. And I was like, I need to change my body so that I fit in this society and that people will love me and accept me and find me attractive. And I thought I need to be skinny. And that's where the behaviors then took on. I didn't understand what was gender. I didn't understand until four years into therapy uh, when I started looking at sexuality. And that's, that's when it hit home. What about your family, friends and family? How did they deal with this? You, you mentioned being in Nebraska. I'm guessing right. a very conservative area yeah. where you said before, never mind transgender, gay, or anything right. else was an issue. What, how did everyone around you react? Well, I don't think my parents would be like, oh, okay, I already knew, or that's good because you were a lousy lesbian, unfortunately. <laughs> I wish I had that. You, uh, yes. My family didn't understand it. It was not a topic that they had ever <coughs> seen or heard before. I'd say that my brother uh, was the most supportive person then. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I always say if it wasn't for him, I don't know if I'd be here. Now, did you have surgery? I did. I did. Uh, top? Bottom? Uh, for me, I completed what some people say all the steps. However, I always say it's really up to the individual. Mm. Not everybody wants surgery, nor do they think they need it. But for me, I knew I needed it. And uh, how, how much are we talking about? Uh, over the past seven years, I've spent 40000 out of pocket. Yeah. yeah. How'd you pay for that? Uh, I worked three jobs. And I have really good credit, so I had really great credit lines. <laughs> yeah. The big thing, yeah. <laughs> so you go through all of this. How do people change in their attitude towards you when you were 
the the female to to becoming a male how did people change i don't think people really changed i think i changed after i transitioned i finally felt like i was in my own skin i felt like i wanted people to see me and that's ah. why i've become a national speaker and share my story with the universities and other agencies across the nation is because i want people to be able to see uh an identity in a person instead of a label We're going to meet Ryan's brother, Greg, who's with us in the audience. We're going to chat with him. And we're going to meet stand-up comic Ian. <laughs> Up next, men who were born female. I am not the only person on the planet that feels awkward about their body and their gender. And the family supporting them. These people are just people that want to live their lives and be happy like everybody else, right? And later. Has your sex life improved? Transgender stand-up comic Ian is on the hot seat. Men who were born female. Today on Trisha. to Ryan, Rocco and Ian, three men who were born female, who say they are now living the lives they were meant to lead. So Ryan, uh, you mentioned your, your brother, mm -hmm. Greg, who's in the audience. We want to come down here and hear from his side because there are always family members involved. So Greg, one of the things Ryan was talking about was that, that time in his life when he went through, I call it eating distress, mm -hmm. also known as anorexia in, in your case. Yeah. Did you know what that was about? I didn't know why he was doing it. I mean, I was really concerned. I mean, he would come into the office. I'm, I'm a chiropractor, yeah, you know, yeah. and he'd come in and I'd work on him. And I could put my hands around his waist like this. It was just like a skeleton. When he smiled, he didn't have cheek fat anymore there's a he just had this oval and it's, he looked like a skeleton it was terrible and you were scared you were gonna yeah lose yeah i I, ta I called my dad at the time i was like if you don't do something i'm gonna go to the courts and i'm gonna do something right you know because he needs to be hospitalized yeah. so, but that transition was, was was that a shock to you it was probably like a deer caught in the headlights you know yeah, like yeah yeah what the hell and then i got my card <laughs> I drove home and I just started freaking bawling. Just it was because yeah. you know it's like, what the hell's going on here? You know, this is my sister. Are you proud of your brother? Oh God, yeah. He does so much for you know in educating the community and businesses and schools, and that's so important because I see all this this mindless hate and bigotry and just it's ignorance. These people are just people that want to live their lives and be happy like everybody else, right? So, yeah. 